beautiful August 30th. Um, so you guys, we have a lot to talk about about what's going on this week in the offices. We have a lot of stuff to talk about that's happened last week uh, for production and what's going on. But before we do so, there's a couple of faces on the screen today that I would like to introduce. First and foremost, if you are a guest to this call or if you are here as a guest of one of our agents that told you to come on, feel free to introduce yourself. Uh, but I want to introduce Cole Riley. Cole Riley is going to be our new Southern California recruiter to really help us build up our Southern California presence. And so, Cole, you want to say hello to the team and, and do a quick introduction, my brother. I'll turn the mic over to you. Yeah, how's it going, guys? Um, as Elias said, I'm Cole Riley, um, based out of um, Orange County, down here in Southern California, Costa Mesa. Um, come from a background of real estate recruiting for a while, then went to full desk. Um, recruiting, do a lot of like real estate development, construction, that kind of um, recruiting and just came back, you know, wanted to help the team. Sounds like a really great opportunity. You know, I see a lot of potential, a lot of growth, um, you know, a lot of positive, positive trajectory, what's going on here with the team. So, you know, it seemed like a great opportunity. I definitely want to be a part of it and, you know, just continue growing it down here. So I love this. Be, uh, you know, excited to be part of the team and, you know, ready to hit it, get it going. That's awesome, Cole. If you guys can help me help Cole out a little bit, if there was one word that described this team from your vantage point, uh, what would that be? Put that in the chat below. That way you can start as he's collecting and developing his, his value proposition. Um, go ahead and put those words down below. And I want you to take a look at this, Cole, so you can hear what everyone says about the company, about the team. Um, does anybody else have a guest on the line that they would like to introduce before we get rolling with the meeting? All right, cool. Let's go ahead and do the quick teaching of the moment. But if you are new and you haven't been to these groups before, Cole, put your Instagram handle in the chat below. That way we can all stay connected and follow each other. What I wanted to do is I wanted to turn it over to Dan Sunberg. Dan Sunberg and I are going to be hosting a 30-day challenge. We're going to talk more about that in a minute. But Dan, let's hear from you about leads. Where are we at? What's consumer behavior like right now? What are our leads saying to us? How many have we received in the last week or so? Let's get a high-level overview from you, Dan. So our lead scientist, Dan Sunberg, let's hear from you, big dog. Yes, yes. Thank you, Elias. So I think one of the first important things to understand about what's going on with leads right now is what's going on with the market. And in the Bay Area, we are one of the, the biggest markets to have price drops in the entire country, right? There's some areas where prices compared to the peak of the last couple months ago are down as much as 15 or 20%. So what does that mean? Buyers coming out of the woodworks, right? So that's really, really, really what I would see and what we are starting to see projecting forward is that as prices are starting to ease up, buyers are starting to come out of the woodworks, are starting to get excited and starting to be really big opportunity. Search volume, I shared this stat a couple of weeks ago, but search volume continues to go up as we look at how many people are typing homes for sale in Google, how many people are requesting tours through Redfin, through Zillow. Uh, they're up as much as 15% compared to June and July in these months, just a couple months ago. So we're starting to see prices go down, buyer activity shoot up. And we're seeing this in our follow-up boss and our real scout accounts as well. I keep sharing these numbers every, every week and every week I'm just blown away because there's such enormous amounts of potential in here. Last week, 712 people were active on our team across all of all of all of your leads, everything that's loaded in there uh, that had searches on Real Scout that were active looking last week, but haven't had a communication in the last week. 712 people, um, 437 people in the last week were searching online. The, these are people that are in our database and had looked at more than 25 homes. So huge, huge, huge potential. Uh, so that's where I'm really excited about this upcoming month, the database challenge with Elias, where we're going to look at how do we dig in and really tap into this. And it's super timely because as this market continues to shift, we need to shift and pivot with it. And I think one of the big, big, big activities and opportunities is going to be getting smart about how we're using our database, how we're looking at analytics, and especially tapping into the people who are starting to get off the fence. So mm. that's it for me. Well said, well said. And we're going to come back to this conversation and it's, it's going to be super important. We're going to talk to you about the database uh, boot camp. We're going to talk to you about how many people have already signed up in less than 24 hours. So Dan, great information. I'm going to come to you in a second, Daniela, but Eric King, bro, we've missed you. We've missed your smile. We've missed your spirit. We've missed your your uh, your attitude around the office, bro. So just talk about reflection, man. There's very, there, not a lot of us take a two week motorcycle ride through this beautiful country, bro. So tell us how you're feeling, some reflections, and then we'll go right over to Daniela. So Eric, our, our, our spirit animal, bro, let's hear from you, bro. 
Oh, Elias, you make me cry, dude. Um, <laughs> yeah, the last two weeks were incredible. Um, you know, I don't know if you guys know, but I'm having a kid in November, and that's kind of the reason why I took this two week long trip uh, to reflect and to, uh, you know, figure some shit out, and also take some time off to enjoy uh, my last few days as a childless person. <laughs> um, but it was really cool. We went up to uh, National Glacier Park. That was our uh, final destination. And uh, I'm naming, we're naming our uh, son, Sun, S-U-N, uh, like the sun in the sky, the light of my life. And in Glacier National Park, I didn't realize this, but the main attraction is to go up all the way up to the mountain. And guess what? The road was called Going to the Sun Road. And so if it was really life affirming and kind of, um, you know, just, I don't know, it just feels right. And so that was a huge uh, part of my reflection, but also, you know, realizing, you know, in this business, it's such a grind and I've been grinding for the last four years, just nonstop. And so it was nice just to take two weeks off. I didn't check emails. I didn't do any work at all for the first time in four years. And it made me realize, you know, life is short. And, um, you know, Elias and Kenny, when we went to that um, mastermind a few months ago, one of the things that the older lady said, she, you know, she almost, she had a heart attack. And in her last, you know, when, when her life flashed before her eyes, it wasn't work or making calls or getting in a contract that flashed before her eyes. It was time spent, you know, with her family and stuff like that. So, you know, it was just a reminder that it's important to keep a balance um, in your business and in your life. Uh, and to me, that was really important. And, you know, but at the same time, I'm, I must be getting old because, you know, week, a week and a half later, I'm like, fuck, I'm ready to go back to work <laughs> and get back to reality. So I'm, I'm, I feel great. I'm, you know, I, you know, I, I highly recommend. Here's the thing. A lot of people, when, when they saw me on vacation for two weeks, they're like, damn, you're still gone. And I was like, dude, yeah, I'm fucking living my life, you know? And I think it, 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 a lot of times in this business, we live to work or yeah, we live to work, you know? And I think it's it's important to realize sometimes that no, we, we work, we work hard and make a lot of money so that we can do things like this, you know? And so that to me, that was one of the biggest takeaways. Um, but yeah, just feeling refreshed and I, I feel really fortunate and grateful. Um, you know, there's a few partners on here like Batsateg and uh, Lauren and Cyrus uh, that have been helping me while I was gone. Um, you know, you look at the the um, the chat and when you told us to describe, you know, in one word what, you know, the biggest thing on our team is a few people said collaboration. And I think that's so true. And I feel very fortunate and grateful to be a part of a team that, you know, uh, is there to help and, and you know, be, have your back when you need it most. So, Nice. Uh, yeah, so I'm feeling fresh and and, and uh, yeah, I love you guys and I, I'm happy to be back. All right, so let's give let's give Eric a, a huge ah oh yeah and congratulations. So oh yeah. on one, three, one, two, three. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> I can you, see a little love rocker y'all. baby walking around. Oh yeah, dad, dad. It's gonna be the cutest thing, bro. I am so so happy for you and your family and your reflection. So before we get started in the meeting. Everyone always asks, well, what do I post on social media? Well, what are consumers asking right now? And how can I answer those answer those questions? And so I wanted to turn the mic over to Daniela Lopez to really talk about this and how to find some of those answers that are consumers that consumers are frequently asking right now, and then turn that into a moment for you to shoot some content to build your own brand. So without further ado, Daniela, I want to turn it back over to you and then we'll get rolling into new escrows for the week. Yes, sir. Oh my gosh, Eric, congratulations again um I'm a huge crybaby so I was like tearing up over here so I'm super happy for you guys so um okay um I'm sure we've heard it up to like our ears right create reels create reels create content um I think that a lot of us have gotten comfortable with creating content that shows off our personality um, to create that relatability with our audience. But many times people are like, okay, well, I, I, I want to show up as an authority figure, but I don't know how to share value. So I'm going to give you guys three places where you can create or come up with ideas that then you develop into prompts 
for video content. And I'm gonna put it in the chat too, so don't worry about writing it all down. The first is askthepublic.com. This is a place where you can go in and type anything related to real estate, moving, mortgage, um, staging a home. And these are all uh, ideas generated by what people are actually typing in Google. So super easy and free resource for you to use. The second is to get inside of Facebook groups. Now, a lot of people are, you know, running over to Instagram, YouTube Shorts, and TikTok. And it makes sense because that's where we're consuming the most content. However, people are still on Facebook having conversations. So if you can get in there and type in Bay Area real estate and start capturing what people are discussing, you can take ideas from that and easily turn it into a video. The last idea is to just Google real estate. You go into the tab where it says like news articles and you're going to get the latest things that are popping up. Kenny brought up a really good point. He said many things that we're seeing in the news, you know, we already knew about it a month or two ago. However, our audience doesn't know that, right? So we want to take advantage and use our expertise and show up as an authority figure. So what you're going to do is you're going to find an article um, that's easy for you to uh, say back on video. You're going to take a couple screenshots. You're going to go over into Instagram and you're going to use the green screen effect. There you'll be able to upload the screenshot that you just took. And all you're going to do is this and you're just gonna describe what you're reading. But here is the key. You want to give this information in a way that a fourth grader is gonna understand, right? If you want a four, if you need a fourth grader, please hit me up. Bella would be more than happy to sit in front and give you some honest feedback. So if you um, have a, a niece or a nephew or your kids, what, let them watch the video over and make sure that you're explaining it in a way that they understand. The reason is we want our content to be easily understood by the masses, right? So those are the, the, the three tips. Last but not least, remember, if you take anything away from this, think like your consumer. Think like your consumer. What are they thinking of? What is keeping them up at night? Because the moment you start thinking like them is when you're going to create content that's going to resonate with them. Beautiful, beautiful. Well said, I love it. And we appreciate all your help in the offices, helping people. I know you coached agents on the team about content, content creation, and you've just been a wealth of information and a great resource to the team. So appreciate you guys and thank you all for sharing. Let's go ahead and get right into the slides for today. And let me go ahead and present. Boom, and start moving through this. So before we get rolling, you guys, um, does anybody have any contributions that they would like to talk about? Is there any upcoming events? Is there anything that's going on in your area, in your city? I see a few hands up, so cool. So let me stop sharing, go right over to you guys. Cynthia Peterson, you first, and then Otis, let's go over to you. So Cynthia, let's hear from you. Yeah, hello, hello, friends. So our family is gonna be hosting our fourth annual food drive in our front yard this year. It's going to be on September, Saturday, September 24th from 9 a.m. to noon. And I would genuinely love if you guys could all stop by and just drop off even a can of food. Right now, the food banks are in severe need of food because with inflation and the economy, Folks have lost jobs across the Bay Area, so it's really important right now for us to, if we are able to, pay it forward. And then if you or someone that you know needs help from the food banks, hit me up. I've got a ton of resources I can send you guys. Um, food insecurity, or excuse me, food Hunger Awareness Month is in September, and so it's a great time for you guys to go out and do your own food drives, too. There's still time for you guys to create a food drive, promote it. You can even do it all online virtually. Um, so if you guys are interested in finding out more about that, let me know. Uh, yeah, and Danielle and her daughter Bella came last year and she took it as an opportunity to teach Bella, like, look, some people don't have what we do. And they went and picked out food together at the grocery store. So September 24th, I'll bring it up again when time gets closer, but would love to see you guys there. 
Yeah, I'd, I'd love to participate. I, I know what it's like not having ki- like food as a kid, right? And like, so if we can help out and I want to bring the girls out and Silas just so they can, you know, understand like what they're doing and how they're contributing. So I love this. Otis White, let's go over to you, big dog. Uh, all my real Oakland people know this coming up weekend is High Road Day. Um, it's going to be like pretty much three way, uh, three day festival in Oakland, like literally a couple of blocks away from the office headquarters. Um, a lot of opportunity to get out there in our gear, sweaters, T-shirts, whatever, so people can see us, potential clients, um, a lot of vendors, food, street people, so we can go put some money back in our community and just the overall a uh, good family experience for the weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, a bunch of after parties and stuff too. Uh, one of my companies, Hip Hop TV, will have a booth there, going to be a lot of performances. So come by, man, support. I love it. I love it. And one of our, our very own, Demi and Bledsoe, is going to be performing at High Road Day. So uh, How can I forget there. that? Fuck, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> let's go out there in the town. Let's represent. Let's support the cause. Let's support Demi and and uh, let's get out there and have some fun. So Otis, I appreciate you sharing. Anybody else have anything going on in the community they want to share? Going once, going twice. All right, cool. We'll keep cruising. Good stuff, you guys. So let's get right into new escrows and productivity for the week. So quite a few names on the board uh, in this category. We have Lamont Sanders got into contract. Down, and Dan Sunberg got in contract for 175. Keelan Johnson, the Conscious Realtor, got in contract for 325. Joseph Chin and Jen Oak for 355. And Maria Dominguez got in the contract for 3. 180,000. So let me do this. I want to see who's on the line really quick. I'm actually going to turn it over to you, Maria. You always bring the energy, always bring the fire. You have great momentum right now. So Maria, talk to us about this transaction. What was the strategy, what you noticed, what worked, and how you got them across the finish line? Let's hear from you. Well, good morning, everyone. I am driving. So um, if you can- Can you get a little closer to your mic? For some reason, it's super, super low. Okay. Well, let's see. How does it there sound? It is. There she is. <laughs> hey, just make it real quick as I'm driving. But um, yeah, so this is actually in Merced. And it was a process of about six months getting my sister-in-law ready to buy. And it's been a struggle. Um, but you know what? First contract, first one, one. Ah, I love it. I love it. Well, drive safe. She's also been creating a lot of content uh, about new developments and it's working for her. She's getting a lot of engagement and she's going to start doubling down on that. So um, love that, Maria. Drive safely to wherever you're going, okay? I sure am. Driving to Elk Grove for actually a women's panel of my sister's girlfriend who's a realtor. So bringing some people along with me to bring the energy. I love it. I love it. All right, we'll go out there and crush it, okay? Um, congratulations to everybody that made it in that category and let's continue cruising on the next category. Oh, yes. Yo, before you move on, uh, I'm Elizabeth Serta. I joined the team back in July Hi, Elizabeth. and I, hi. And I, yeah, I just wanted to mention that I did forget to mention that ask her for the last, um, that last meeting, but I got under contract for that 490 in Oakland. Uh, Liz, hold on one second. Cause we're about to come to you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so Raymond Rosales got in the contract for 400000 Ben Rojas got in the contract for four hundred and five. dollars Angel Yang got in the contract for four ten. dollars Your boy Otis White on the board once again, $450,000. And Miss Elizabeth Serta got in the contract for four ninety. dollars So Elizabeth, I'll actually give the mic to you. Tell us about this contract, what worked for you, and congratulations on your very first fast transaction. And we need to get you a new headshot. So let's hear from you. Yes. Tell us about your... <laughs> Uh, your process, your strategy, and what worked for you. Okay, well, this one, I actually don't even remember where this referral came from. <laughs> like, honestly, I've, been, I've just been in touch with him for like the past two years. Um, I think it was a, an investor that I met somewhere, and it was another guy that was uh, trying to get a group of investors together, and he introduced me to to this buyer. And so we've just been in touch, um, for, like I said, for the last two years, but nothing had... I don't know, actually, we got under contract on just the land a lot last year in Oakland, but then this year he wanted to get something for his family because they're renting. Um, so we found this property that has been on the market for a while um, on Davis Street, and we it was on the market for five fifty. Uh, we got into contract at four ninety. Actually, we offered four eighty. I mean, I was like, it doesn't hurt because they didn't have any offers at hand. Um, but then we they counter back and we counter back at the four ninety. So we got under contract on the four ninety. Yeah, so I'm just, I feel um, just really glad that I'm able to help this family become homeowners. 
Love it. Well, congratulations on your first of many in our environment and hats off to you. Uh, yes, Otis, thank you. Hi to everyone. A, <laughs> hi, everyone. Uh, I like this shirt too. Otis, is that a new hand or is that an old hand, bro? It was an old hand. That's why I took okay. it down. All right, cool, cool. All right, guys, congratulations to everybody that made it in that category and let's continue on. So J Jordana Taylor got into contract for 499999. That was a flex deal. Uh, Julie, the numbers agent, got into contract for 500,000. And Ilona and Pinky Chan got into contract for 540. And I'm, I'm actually going to call on you, Ilona. And here's why. Let's first off, let's give a huge shout of gratitude out to Ilona. She graduated out of the advisor program. She accomplished her first three deals. She has now got so much, uh, you know, traction. She was at the Elevate event this last weekend. She is just a woman on a mission. So Ilona, tell us about this deal. What work? What's going on? You're full of excitement. And, and, and uh, I just want to turn the mic over to you and hear from you. So Ilona, grab the mic and let's talk about this deal. Thanks, guys. Um, so. As, as it happens, this deal got canceled yesterday because the seller refused to make any repairs and there was a leaking toilet and it was noted in the um, report. And when I got there to do a, a walkthrough, the toilet never got fixed, so it continued to leak. And we made a decision that um, the selling agent's poor communication because he didn't respond to our repair request for like five days and just the lack of communication and um, it just didn't feel right for our buyer. So um, Pinky and I really had a good conversation. Uh, we decided to recommend to our buyer since she is a single woman who doesn't speak any English, going to be new to the Bay Area needed something turnkey, um, we told her the situation and told her that we are willing and, and able to find her something better in this market. So we collectively decided to cancel the contract yesterday. And I think that that was to, uh, for the fiduciary duty of my relationship with my buyer, I think that was really important. But the buyer's still around. The market is a lot easier now. There's more houses to look at. So I don't feel like nervous about it. I know she's still in our pocket and I know that she's actively looking because she's like in an Airbnb right now. So it's going to happen. It just wasn't meant to be. Um, but I did get into contract with my sister also last week. It just kind of never made it onto the board. And that one is almost closed. And that was really great. It was a down payment assistance and uh, someone who was in like pre-foreclosure. So it's kind of interesting because there's not a lot of room for negotiation. Everybody kind of needed what they needed. And it was felt really good to um, finally find those buyers a home because we toured like 30 houses and we're, we're almost done. So, you know, I absolutely love this. You know, first things first, uh, somebody put it in the chat, you know, way to advocate. You know, that's, that's our job, right? It's to advocate and educate for the consumer. And you did a really good job on that. And, and a lot of times that means we may have to walk away from the transaction. Well, if it's in the best interest of the client, which this was, then good for them to, you know, not get into something that's going to affect their quality of life. And maybe she doesn't know how to do plumbing and cut out the floors and how, who knows how much damage there is. So good job. But let me ask you a question, Ilona. You have tremendous traction right now. Like, like what's really working for you right now for tell the team how many transactions you've put in the contract since you've joined the team and like what do you believe is really working for you right now in your business um so i got licensed at the end of march and joined team fast in april and i think what um and this was well this was my fourth contract in but my third contract that's going to be closed and i um I, I had a really good mentor. I, I'm not, I don't want to like super brag about it, but like my mentor had answered the phone at all kinds of weird hours and really uh, talked me through it. And he also didn't bullshit me. He kind of was like, all right, we're going to sit down like a four-year-old. Now let's look at this contract. What doesn't look right? You know, and I think I needed that. I needed a little bit of a dad, strong arm, someone yeah. who wasn't you know, someone who wasn't just trying to sugarcoat it and be nice with me, but someone who was like, come on, I see it in you. Let's do it. And, um, and then also just like te the team guys, like showing up, man, I'm more productive when I go to the office, although I do love catching up with everybody, um, you know, hitting my CRM, like calling mm -hmm. and yes. emailing. And after Elevate, I realized how not enough 
I'm touching each client. The numbers that were thrown out at Elevate, how many times you're supposed to talk to your leads, your hot leads, your, your medium leads, and your not so hot leads, I'm far behind compared to what those numbers were. So I can only imagine if I get my stuff together better and follow my calendar and be more serious with myself and you know have that higher expectation for myself, it's just going to keep blowing up. It doesn't matter what the market's doing. Totally. doesn't matter. Because right now you're on a pace of an average of one a month. If you've made one minor tweak, that's two a month. That's 24 deals in the year. That's an amazing year. That's an yeah. amazing year. So like we're talking small minor adjustments. And we're going to talk about that in a moment. But Ilona, it doesn't go unnoticed. We see you. Brian gave you a shout out on the call earlier. Uh, but we see what you're doing and it is amazing. Love the energy and love the video content. So congratulations to you and Pinky and everyone else that got in the contract in that category. Uh, let's continue on. Mr. Mark Otis, one of our OGs, got in contract for 555. Great job, Mark Otis. Stephanie Palasama, Miss Appointment Center, got in contract for 588888. And Omar Torrio got in contract for 640000 Uh, Mark, I think I see you there in the Oakland office, big dog. You want to talk about this transaction? Let's, uh, let's have Mark talk about this. Let's hear from you, bro. Oh, that, hey, guys, can you hear me? Loud and clear, brother. Yeah, this is uh, this is actually for um, one of my family members. So uh, they they rented the house for many many years, and uh, they wanted to continue renting. But I talked to them about the market change, and you know it's probably good to capitalize on what you have now as far as you know a free and clear property. You know, selling it, getting the profit, moving on to another house, which they're going to be doing uh, probably later in the month. So yeah, it was. Pretty easy. Um, the first uh, first contract we were in contract earlier. Uh, the buyer didn't perform, and then we had two buyers this past I guess this past weekend make two offers and they competed against each other. And then we picked the one that went you know to the seller's liking. So that was about it. Good job, my man. Congratulations to you and everyone else that made it. Thank you, guys. If we can put that. Um, that on it's super sensitive. Thank you. Uh, Aaron, you have your hand up. Let's hear from you. What's up, Aaron? Hi, I just wanted to say that I opened escrow yesterday for 580. But um, the thing that was most important is that I had this person in my database for a year. And so a year ago, I transferred about 1,800 names into my KV Core database. And I probably turned on campaigns late um, last year. So probably about this time. And I've been talking to him since the beginning of the year, but now we're we're making it, you know, we, we opened escrow yesterday. So I, I just kind of want to add to what we were talking about the last couple of days about our database management. So I love it. And, and Aaron, um, have you filled out the um, teamfastescrow.com sheet yet? No, probably not. So no, it's all good. You're still new to the, the, the you know, to the system and the process. Well, make sure that you have that because once you hit that and you input your pending transaction, then we get notified on monday.com and then we can put you on the slide deck for next week because we want to honor you and have your name in lights. But congratulations nonetheless. Thank you. Can you can somebody put the tag or like the name of that document again in the chat? And then totally. boy, okay, perfect. Thank you. Aaron, be sure to check your Slack and your email, your team account. It'll be in there for you. Okay, I was in there yesterday, but I'll look. All right, awesome, awesome. Well, congratulations to you. Um, one of many, many to come. Um, let's go to the next category, 770 to 990. Andrea Willis got in contract for 930 and Armando Castillo got in a contract for 988. And let me just double check really quick. Um, Armando, are you on this morning, bro? I don't think Armando's on. Uh, and let's see if Andrea is on. So neither one of them are on, but um, Armando last week was in the office. This was his listing. And he was, he was nervous because the offers were due. He didn't have anything. Everyone was sending him these low ball offers. He was a little nervous, a little scared. And he got an offer um, that the sellers really liked. And so um, I've been hearing a lot of positive things about listings. Um, if you follow Ivan Santa Cruz, he had an open house this last weekend, I think in the Tri-Valley, and he had 71 people come through his open house, 71 people. So open houses are still stacked. If it's in the right neighborhood, right price, people knock on, if you knock on the neighbor's doors, you're going to get uh, attendance. And so um, there's definitely some great signs out there of buyer activity. All right, let's continue cruising on. Uh, Jen O got in contract three times. 
1.1 million, 703 and 660,000. Congratulations, Jen. Um, that would, Karina, please correct me if I'm wrong. That puts her over the 100 deal mark since her, uh, since her start with us. So Jen, if you're on the line, or if you guys see Jen, talk to her. Huge uh, shout out and congratulations to her. 100 deals in just a couple of short years. Um, what an accomplishment. Uh, Demi and Bledsoe got in the contract uh, for a flex deal for 1.2, and Tiana got in the contract for 1.3. Love these price points. Love it. Let's see if Demi is on. Let's uh, see if Tiana is on. Neither one of these three are on, but let's send them a huge congratulations when you see them and tag them on social. Um, so you guys, we had a decent week last week. And now, Kenny, we were talking about the, our most pending escrows in a while. Did you want to talk about that really quick, about the number, where we're at? Yeah, I mean, we're, we, this is the most amount of pending answers we've had in, like at one time since I think April. So the market, like we're seeing it, the market's bouncing back. We had our lowest month in July, which is $61 million close, but we're still number one team the EXP. So really promising, uh, pacing at this puts out a billion dollars a year. So that, you guys, that's the goal. I know originally when we started the year, it was $2 billion. Um, that was a lofty goal. But right now, our focus is just to be able to hit that two, that billion dollar mark and what an accomplishment that's going to be. Um, you guys, we want to go into our story of the week. And this guy has really shown up in the last couple of weeks. He has been an inspiration to the team, what he's creating, his purpose, his mission, and not allowing himself to be uh, defeated by any self-limiting beliefs. And so I, I hope that he's on today, but we wanted to feature Omar and... Man, uh, Omar, we just absolutely love your courage, your strength, your ability to really fight through adversity, bro. And he said it the other day. He's like, I'm not quite there yet. I don't have anything in a contract, but I know that I'm doing the work that's going to get me there. And so we want to congratulate you, Omar. We want to make you the story of the week and just say, we see you, big dog. We know that you're fighting behind the scenes, man. And all that's going to come to fruition. So Omar, if you could, man, take the mic for a quick second and let's hear from you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. Um... That was really unexpected, but uh, yeah, I, I, it feels good that, you know, uh, people see the work and uh, I'm going to go into, I don't listen to Gary Vee, but I started to recently and yesterday he said something that just like is going to stay in my head forever because a lot of like lately imposter syndrome, haters, everything have kind of been getting to me a little bit, but he said that the people that are hating on like your passion, your business and on whatever that is that you're doing that you love are the people on the bleachers eating the hot dogs while you're on the field playing. And that just resonated with me. And I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah, I'm going to keep playing. Like it's not over till it's over. So I'm just reminding myself that I'm not going to be part of that. What is it? 70% that quit real estate. So yes, that's where yes. it is. <laughs> I love that. And here's the thing, Omar, they try to hate and they try to point fingers because they have their own insecurities. Mm -hmm. right and so it's just like great people will elevate other people and be like you know what great job like let's let's pull this person up right it's like when people try to chime in on people's facebook chats and and, and like you see it and you're like why are you being so negative bro like you got a whole team of people here there's 300 plus people that believe in you will be in your corner man so congratulations to you thank we you. appreciate you and we love seeing all the hard work behind the scenes man thank you thank you everyone Let's, uh, let's show Omar some love on the screen. Give him a reaction down below. Appreciate you. Aaron, was that a new hand or an old hand? Old hand? Yeah. All right, cool. Awesome. So let's continue on. Uh, appreciate you, Omar. All right, guys. So next week for Keep It Moving Group Coaching, not tomorrow, but next week. Tomorrow we'll still have our session. But we have Jen Gottlieb. She's going to come on. She is an influencer. She's a keynote speaker. She's a former VH1 host and Broadway actress. Um, she is blowing up on social. She's going to come to group coaching next Wednesday to talk to you about building authentic brands, about posting social content, all the things that we've been talking about. And we just want you to hear it over and over and over again from people that are winning at a very high level. So Tune in, make sure that you invite people, not only to tomorrow when we don't have a guest, but make sure to promote this and bring people into our environment on Wednesdays. This is a great opportunity for you to bring one guest that you know from another brokerage, that their brokerage is not doing this. All they're doing is some boring ass legal update and their meetings are dry. Bring them here, get them excited, have them learn from somebody that is crushing it on a very, very big level. Um, so onboarding Q&A, I don't know if Drea is on, but 
I want to turn it over to you, Drea. If not, then I'll turn it over to Molly to talk to us about what is happening this Friday for um, for onboarding Q and A. So, Drea, let's hear from you. I'm driving. Sorry, but it's hopefully, okay. can you guys hear me? Okay. Yeah, loud and clear. Okay, cool. All right, so yeah, we're doing the onboarding uh, Q and A on Fridays. It's been going very well. Agents have been joining. Um, essentially, what it is is a lot of our new agents um, don't know what to do, who to ask, where to go. So they feel a little bit lost, overwhelmed. So that's why we're hosting our um, onboarding Q and A. So bring your questions. Um, if you don't know where to get open house signs, or who does marketing, or who, what our virtual assistants do, bring your questions. I'll help you get those answered. And whatever other questions you might have after we get off this call that you might think, hey, I'll join on Friday. Be there, I'll be there, and I'll be able to help you out. <laughs> Love it, Andrea. Yeah, you guys look at this as kind of like your compass, right? Just gives you some direction on where to go, who are the key players in the environment, who does what. And so these sessions have been great. I'm um, looking forward to another great one this time. That's at noon yeah, on Friday. And then after you that, can, sorry, go ahead, Andrea. You can find the, the Zoom link on the Team Fast calendar too. Totally. Yep. And then following after that, Kenny has a session that he's going to be putting on all about MailChimp. So Kenny, let's talk to him about what's happening directly after um, our onboarding queue. Yeah, I don't have like a gender thing because I, 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 you read on site, I've actually spent thousands of hours inside of MailChimp. Uh, so this class is going to be like more like a workshop style, making sure you guys can onboard, join MailChimp correctly, get some templates set up, get your database in there, and I'll work, work you with you guys through it. So. I think I'll, I will physically be in the Oakland office in the conference room doing this, but we'll have a Zoom presentation on this link. That way I can get live questions at the same time. Again, this is more like a workshop because the, the training and the design and all that is, is pretty advanced. We can just get you guys some basic stuff going on. And we'll start that at 1 o'clock on Friday in this room or Oakland office. Perfect, perfect. That's going to be exciting, you guys. Um, can't wait for both of those sessions. Um, let's talk a little bit about boot camp. The 30 day challenge starts September 1st. The first day will be this Thursday and check this out, you guys in less than, let me just go here to my other screen in less than, let's say 24 hours, you guys signed up. There was 74 people that registered for this event. Now the sign up sheet is in your email as well as in uh in slack but you have 74 people that have already registered for this event check out some of the names that are going to be here with you guys for the 30 day um you guys have people that have done 50 transactions and you have done people you have people that are on pace to do their first so and everything in between so this is a great mix of people so what is the database challenge the boot camp database challenge so what this is is we wanna make sure that you guys come out of this session true masters of your database. What we heard from John Cheplak and other people in the industry is that our follow-up game needs to be heightened. John Cheplak said that every single person in your CRM needs to have an average of 24 touch points that are recorded, documented, and noted inside of your CRM. Now that should be over the span of 12 months. The other day we had said within the month, but that's just way too much. The point is, is that a lot of times we're not recording enough of our conversations. We're not going in there, putting our notes, putting our phone calls. And then what we're not doing is we're not recording enough of our calls. So then we can say, okay, I've done the activity. Let me actually go in and listen to what I'm doing. So what I want to do and Dan and I want to do is we want to make sure that you guys understand how to truly, truly manage your CRM as well as your real scout. There's tons of opportunities in both of those platforms and those leads, if looked at right, and if they're communicated with effectively, have a higher propensity to convert based on where they are in the sales funnel. So we want to make sure that everyone comes out of this session. It's 30 days. It's a sprint where everyone's going to keep a daily tracker of points. We'll go over that on Thursday, but you're going to be able to see where everyone else is. You're going to have an accountability person. You're going to add an average of 40 people to your database for that 30 days. So our hope is that everyone comes out of that a master of this. What this will also help you do is to forecast your business based on what is in your CRM. 
Dan has an amazing way of looking at the science and the data to show, okay, here are the people that if you're forecasting your business based on what your goals are, these are the ways that we're going to focus. We're going to teach you how to clear out your CRM, how to put people in certain buckets, make sure that that is a smooth running machine. Because let me ask a question. How many people believe that their CRM is 100% on point right now? Just give me a reaction below if you believe that your CRM is running and firing on all cylinders. See, even Cynthia, I saw like a hand like this. I saw big thumbs down from, from Daniela, and I don't see anybody else's thumbs up for, yeah, I am absolutely crushing it. I will tell you what, you guys, there is tons of opportunity within our database, and we're going to show you the tips, the tools on how to really master your database. Anything else you want to add to that, Dan? That's it. I think if everyone walks away with exactly what you said, how to organize and master your database and know how to use that as a tool to take work off of your shoulders, it, it's going to be an enormous success. Totally. Here should be the goal for all of us. A thousand leads in our CRM. When you put a thousand leads into your CRM within the next 24 months, guess what you never have to do? You never have to pay for an online lead. Go to Redfin, Zillow, Opsity, or OJO because you are fishing in your own pond that you have created. So we're going to talk about that. Also, there's some prizes. This is the very first time that we've had some prizes attached to a boot camp. Why do we do that? I don't know. I just thought it would be fun. So for the first prize winner, we're going to go over the points and how that's um, derived at our meeting on Thursday. The very first prize winner will get a three-day, or excuse me, a two-day night, a two-night stay out in Napa. We'll pick a dope resort for you guys to go, get away with your significant other, and have a nice, luxurious weekend on us. Second prize winner gets $1,000 to use towards marketing expenses. That could be your farm. That could be campaigns that you're wanting to run. But you'll get 1000 bucks, and the third place will get a, an Envision Media video. That could be something that you've wanted to create about your, your, you know, your brand, your image, your community, whatever it is. It's completely up to you. So um, fourth place, you are fired. <laughs> Thank you, Karina. So yeah, so we're very excited about you guys. It's going to be different. And listen. Um, we're not going to kick anybody out of this boot camp. If you come to the boot camp, you're going to see everyone's points on there. You either show up, do the work, or you don't. It's completely up to you. I'm going to ask that if you're in that room, that you guys are committed, that you see it through. It's only 30 days. And at 30 days, I promise you guys will take out value and your business will grow if it's done correctly. So take a look at the sign-up sheet if you want it. There's an email that I sent out yesterday. Why should you join the boot camp? And we have 74 people that have already signed up and sky's the limit where we go from here. The only two things that we ask or three things, you've completed the onboarding process, you have follow-up boss set up and you have Real Scout set up. If you have those things done, all we need you to do is get in those rooms, learn and grow together. Any questions on that? Cool, awesome. Let me go back to my slides here. Um, housekeeping reminders. You guys, um, this is obviously, this is a universal message, but we've been getting um, some complaints and some concerns in our Brentwood office. Super important, you guys. Obviously, our offices are self-governed. We don't have somebody there every single day. We just ask that people clean up after themselves. We ask that you do what you would do at grandma's house and make sure that you leave the place nice and tidy. It's not our job. It's not Brian's job. It's nobody's job. Clean up after each other. Just make sure that you guys are tidying up workspaces. Elias, can I chime in here real quick? Dude, I would love it. In addition to housekeeping of like dishes and food and everything, um, it is also a shared workspace. So whatever uh, furniture you move, please put it back in the right place. That goes for paintings, that goes for chairs, couches, um, ring camera, I mean not ring cameras, um, ring lights, uh, any equipment, wherever you get it from, please put it back to where it is. So all agents have access to it and they aren't missing a power plug. They aren't missing the ring. They are just so everyone can use it and it's treated fairly and you keep things where it is. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. Um, all right, guys, let's go to the last question of the week. So why don't you have an updated headshot? <laughs> it's, it's a simple, simple question, but why don't you have an updated headshot? There's some headshots out there that aren't even headshots. There's some, because here's the thing, we want to showcase you. We want to edify you. We want to put you on the slides, but if there is not a new headshot, then, uh, you know, we're, we're challenged. M mine works. Okay. All right, cool. So we want to make sure that, yeah, I've seen yours, Derek. You actually have a good headshot. But any good recommendations for photographers? So Nita, 
So every single month we do headshots in the office. You can, uh, you can reach out to Patrick. We do them in-house. What we're also thinking about doing, and this is not in stone, is we want to put on the calendar doing a content day in Southern California as well. For all of our Southern California team members that want to get on camera, they want to do some spotlight videos, and they want to do some great creation, we want to get uh, Patrick on the road. And so that's something that we are talking about, and nothing's in stone right now, but we want to bring the show on the road and get one down to you guys so you guys can shoot some, um, some great content, do some headshots. But don't sleep on this, you guys. You have so many opportunities to get a headshot. Patrick is the best in the industry for video and video creation. When we're talking about Patrick, he just created some agent spotlight videos. Also, we're doing Hispanic Heritage Month. The videos that he created, I saw a couple of them, Roxanne's, Will's, Jung He's, Run-On's, they all turned out phenomenal. So super, super excited. And it allows you just to build and build and build. Um, you can reach him, Nita, on Slack. Just send him a Slack. Hey, Elias, let me chime in here real quick while everybody's coming up with excuses. So <laughs> um, if they have headshots, that's great. A lot of new agents come on board and they don't have them. But again, reading is fundamental. Patrick sends out the calendar. We sent out special invites to new agents to allow you guys to get first dibs. So again, if you have a headshot that you want to use and we deem it's appropriate, no bathroom shots, no nothing like that, right? Send it to us so we make sure we have it in Dropbox. So when we have marketing collateral or when we want to mention you on the dashboard, we have an updated photo that we can use. Again, check your email, check Slack. Communication um, is key here. We constantly put it out. So again, uh, there are going to be some changes, some new items rolling out for the team. Trust me, you're going to want your headshot available. And please respect Patrick's time and everyone else's time. When you book a slot, please make it. Uh, and if you aren't able to make it, please give Patrick a heads up. 100%. Um, I hear that Kathy's new headshot turned out really good. Um, and congratulations to Kathy. She has lost 80 pounds in this last year. So. Congratulations to you, Kathy. Great new headshot. Looking fire. Um, love that. So you guys, don't sleep on that. This is your brand. This is your business. We want to make sure that people see you now. They don't see an old glamour shot of you shot at Mervyn's years and years ago. Get something that's updated, that looks good, that's not in a JCPenney background. You guys have the best photographer and videographer in the game. Utilize him. Take advantage of it. Um, so you guys, if there's nothing else for the good of the order. Elias, here is one more thing. Uh, in the open office today, we are having a town hall lunch and learn with Chase. Um, lunch is going to be dropped off here at 12 o'clock. It will start at 1 to 2, and it's going to be an open forum. Perfect. Great stuff on the calendar. I'm looking forward to seeing everybody for the town hall. I'm meeting some people out in Stockton today to talk about growth out in this area with Catalina and the team out on this side of the Altamont Pass. If you guys need anything at all, let me know. Remember, champions run towards accountability. They don't run away from it. So we are here to support you in anything that you guys need. So have a wonderful, wonderful day. I'll see you guys tomorrow. See you guys later for our meetup here. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Peace.